Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Chris Troyer, the DMSP Program Manager. And on behalf of the entire DMSP community, welcome to today's legacy event, the launch of Flight 19. DMSP satellites have served for over half a century, providing critical weather data to military and civilian forces worldwide. It's because of your hard work and dedication that we're able to continue this long and rich tradition. So today, take a moment, enjoy this time, and take pride in your efforts as we launch Flight 19 and prepare for Flight 20. Amat Victoria Eris, victory through weather. Another Air Force satellite system is making daily contributions to the lives of every American. The Defense Meteorological Satellite System routinely provides its military weather pictures to the public. For the past 50 years, the Defense Meteorological Satellite Program, DMSP satellites, have fulfilled the military's most critical requirements for global, atmospheric, oceanic, terrestrial, and space environment information. Through these satellites, military users find, track, and forecast weather systems over remote and hostile areas for deployed troops. DMSP supports a broad range of civil users with sensing capabilities not provided by U.S. civil and foreign weather satellite systems. The United States Air Force, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman team carry on this legacy as the 19th DMSP Block 5D3 weather satellite readies for launch from Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. We've had a long-standing partnership with the U.S. Air Force dating back to the 1960s. We have delivered almost 50 satellites over 50 years. Last August, an Air Force C-17 Globemaster III aircraft transported DMSP Flight 19 from Sunnyvale, California. And here it is, the C-17 carrying the nation's next weather satellite for the United States Air Force touches down here at Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. This is so exciting. We get to continue the proud tradition of flying DMSPs for the nation. It was absolutely outstanding. We had a great team that transported it uh, down. We're going to transport it to our payload integration test facility. And there we'll go through uh, about a seven to uh, nine month process where we'll actually do some final tests. And it feels great to be actually out here and uh, beginning this close to launching our satellite and actually putting uh, our mission up in space. Fantastic day all around, all coming together to, to bring this very important satellite to Vandenberg to continue weather operations for the nation. DMSP's F-19 satellite has received comprehensive service life extension program modifications to address all known life-limiting factors and maximize on-orbit operations. As far as acquisitions goes, this is like the most exciting thing you can do is to see something come to fruition. The primary weather sensor on DMSP is the operational line scan system, which provides continuous visual and infrared imagery of cloud cover over an area 600 nautical miles wide. And you can see here uh, on the top of the spacecraft uh, one of the key components for the, uh, for the OLS sensor. And also next to that is a microwave sensor uh, also used for atmospheric uh, uh, monitoring to provide a national uh, access to do a very critical mission, not just for, for, for defense, but for saving life. But you, there are many examples why uh, this is very critical to the operation of the Department of Defense. I've worked with the OLS, the primary sensor on the, on the DMSP satellite, since 1972. It's a very, uh, very re rewarding program. We've been working uh, hand in hand with our contractors, with our aerospace personnel, with the, our Air Force team. Everyone has come together. I uh, couldn't ask for a better team or a more solid team. We've got a satellite up there right now that's been running continuously for 18 years. Been a uh, very good investment for the country as far as, uh, as far as providing weather and, and space environmental data. Energy is sky high. Oh, I've got second lieutenants out here who's graduated from the academy all the way through my aerospace support who have been on this program for almost as long as the program itself. It's 52 years going. Uh, we are the longest running production satellite in the world. It's very gratifying to me to see the younger generations coming on and, and being so interested and picking up so quickly on the on the stuff. It's, it's, it's a good thing. We always so, remark on how incredible that is. We right. have lieutenants and these young airmen coming that's in right. and the responsibility they're given. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've seen it through the oh, years. Oh, yes, definitely. And how does it make you feel to be a part of that team with the Air Force and the contractors and civilians? Oh, yeah. I mean, in, in, on, on this program, even compared to some other programs that I discussed with my colleagues, this program has a history of absolute cooperation and openness between the uh, the various co-contractors and the, and the Air Force. It's, uh, 
It's a very good relationship of, of trust that's been built up over the years. As a result, DMSP's F-19 will provide operational friendly forces weather information superiority into the 2025 timeframe. And once on orbit, will be the seventh satellite in the DMSP constellation. We just uh, finished completing uh, two of our sensors installed, which basically completes all of our spacecraft integration here at the payload integration facility. This is going to be the seventh uh, spacecraft on orbit and just feels amazing contributing to such a long-standing program over 50 years. The Air Force determined the space-based weather sensors needed, updating the 50-year-old DMSP program to fulfill future Department of Defense missions. DMSP remains the DOD's only assured source of global weather data. This face that we're looking at here is the Earth-facing side of the satellite when it's, when it's flying. So our sensor is pointing down and sweeping, sweeping back and forth six times a second, photographing the Earth and then uh, uh, storing those images and transmitting them down to our ground stations once every orbit. Data from these satellites can help identify, locate, and determine the intensity of severe weather, such as thunderstorms, hurricanes, and typhoons. It also can be used to form three-dimensional cloud analysis, which are the basis for computer forecast models to meet unique military requirements. I'm going to get it deployed too. I'm, I'm trying to get it deployed. So I know by sending this, this uh, satellite into space, it's going to help me out and help out my, my brothers and my, my friends that are out there. We've been training up all of our personnel uh, to get ready for launch, and that encompassed uh, two rehearsals, as well as internal training to get our members ready for launch. We're here at the Remote Launch Control Center at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Mission control for day of launch. Let's head inside and meet the DMSP crew as they conduct their integrated crew exercise. This completes the comm check on SC-3. These exercises uh, help us hone our skills. Ready. And they allow us to work together as, as a team. The simulated launch window is 10 minutes long. As on the spacecraft side, as an integrated launch team, contractor team. SVNet, do you read me? Copy that, thank you. This is the so we understand the issues, we can think through our, our answers and what we would do if on the day of launch. As final preparations are being made, tell me how you feel right now in this phase of the game. Oh, we're feeling real good. Uh, it's a beautiful morning here at Vandenberg, and uh, we're getting ready to hoist uh, the encapsulated assembly up to the rocket, so uh, it's going to be an exciting morning. And after a 12-mile, two-hour journey down to the launch pad, the United Launch Alliance team is ready to hoist the payload up to the rocket. The crane will move in, mm -hmm. and then we'll basically take it down. Let's see. Uh, Let's go over here, and you can show me a little bit. The payload adapter will be mated to the inside ring of the Centaur. And then what will it do now when it sits here until launch? Uh, they have lots and lots of, of testing that they do on the pad. Then uh, next week we'll go through some final integrated systems tests where uh, you're testing both the satellite systems along with the launch vehicle systems to make sure they're talking together. It's been a total integrated team effort. On the support side of being in the military, you don't get to see a lot of action that uh, you know some of our war fighters do. But this is how we contribute to the fight. I know our warfighters are going to appreciate everything that this capability is going to give them. It's a, it's a rewarding experience to know that we're contributing in our own way to the fight. We are now ready for launch. What an exciting time it is to be here as part of this launch campaign, ready to launch this magnificent satellite into orbit and provide many years of support to our warfighters and national leaders. Go DMSP! Go DMSP!